For the past few weeks, we've been seeing economic sanctions on Iran being lifted, and also world leaders rushing in to improve their ties with Tehran. What do these changes mean, actually, for the world and Korea? We'll find out right here in this program, up front. Iran, a country of 80 million people, the world's fourth largest proved oil reserves and second largest natural gas reserves, has finally joined the international community again. That's because the international economic sanctions on Iran in response to the country's nuclear development have been lifted. The United States and the EU will immediately lift nuclear-related sanctions expanding the horizon of opportunity for the Iranian people. History of economic sanctions on Iran goes back to the year 2002. A secret uranium enrichment facility was found in Iran and it brought a huge impact on the international community. In 2006, UN Security Council adopted a resolution that demanded Iran to halt its uranium enrichment program and the U.S. as well as the E.U. also decided to impose sanctions on Iran. The U.S. took strong economic sanctions against Iran by passing Comprehensive Iran Sanctions Accountability and Divestment Act in 2010, which include trade and investment ban on Iran. Korea also agreed on U.S. sanctions against Iran and reduced trade volume with Iran by one-third. Iran had suffered from severe economic crisis because of the global economic sanctions. And a wind of change has started to blow after President Hassan Rouhani took office in 2013 and pledged to revitalize the livelihoods of the public by improving their relations with the Western countries. And on July last year, Iran nuclear agreement was finally settled after a long-standing discussion between Iran and six permanent members of UN Security Council. Economic sanctions were decided to be lifted on the condition that Iran stops developing nuclear materials that are necessary for nuclear weapons. Dynamics surrounding the global economy have been fluctuating along with the lifting of sanctions on Iran, which is expected to represent a huge opportunity for the global market. Well, for today's discussion, we have in studio Zhang Jiang, Director of Middle East and North African Center at Asan Institute for Policy Studies. Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for having me. And also Shin Dong Chan, Attorney in Practice and also an expert in overseas investment uh, issues. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And for our viewers, I suppose, who are joining from all around the world here, I think we need kind of like overall background. Yeah. Uh, information about what we are talking about here. And because we are talking about the lifting of Iranian sanctions, can we go over briefly on the history of Ira and the, the sanctions on Iran? Okay, back in, in uh, year 29, mm -hmm. the international community and IAEA believe that there's like suspicious nuclear activity in mm -hmm. Iran. And after in year 2011, many uh, responsible international actors, including Korea, decide to participate in uh, much harsher sanction, which squeezed the Iranian society in general and the Iranian middle class in specific, and who in turn decide to support the moderate uh, faction. And voila, we have the uh, moderate uh, President Rouhani right now, mm -hmm. after year uh, 2013. The, the presidential election. Mm. So basically the current level of sanctions have been in place for the past about what six years, seven mm. years, right? Mm -hmm. Basically. Mm -hmm. And it feels like because of the uh, the relationship between Washington and Tehran, looks mm. like that uh, certain kind of sanctions have been in place like forever, yeah. but uh, the current level right. sanctions have been in place for the past about seven years, I suppose. Then um, a lot of media coverage you have mm -hmm. seen so mm -hmm. far uh, and it, the, the general public gets this idea that everything is lifted, but that's not the case, right? Uh, th no. There are certain things that's remaining in place. Sure, mm -hmm. sure. As you said, that uh, especially the U.S. sanctions against Iran, mm -hmm. unilateral sanctions, mm -hmm. are still in place. So U.S. persons like U.S. citizens, green card holders, and mm -hmm. the U.S. companies are still subject to sanctions 
whatever businesses they do with Iran, except for very specific limited matters. Mm. And also, the Iran's destabilizing activities in the Middle East, mm -hmm. like the support of terrorism mm -hmm. and also the Iran's abuse of human rights mm -hmm. and also Iran's test of ballistic missiles right. and the expansion of its conventional weapons mm -hmm. are still subject to the U.S. and U.N. sanctions. Mm. I'm, then in that case, uh, Attorney Shin, uh, it will be difficult to quantify mm -hmm. these sanctions in place, but in a rough sense, how much, uh, you know, what percent of the, the, you know, the sanctions that used to be in place, would you say is kind of lifted? I mean, I'm sure the quantity-wise, number-wise, it will be difficult, but in your rough sense? Well, it's very difficult Less to than quantify. Half? Yeah, I would say less than 60% of sanctions are lifted. Okay, mm -hmm. so it's, it's a first step mm -hmm. in terms of normalizing uh, Iran's uh, international uh, economic relations, I suppose, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Then, can you, Dr. Zhang, can you tell me just a little bit about the, the missile-related sanctions? Because I noticed that those sanctions were announced like one day after yeah. the announcement of the, uh, the you know, lifting of the, the, the previous sanctions. Yes, by uh, IAEA. Yes. Right. What's happening with the missiles? What's the problem with the missiles? Okay, so the thing is that uh, right now, the supporters of the sanction mm -hmm. within Iranian politics right. mm -hmm. is only from the uh, reformist moderate faction, okay. meaning that the hardliners, including the IRGC, the military, is not really supporting the sanctions, mm -hmm. I mean, sanction lifting at all. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, they think that they are losing their ground mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the only winner is the reformist faction and there is, you know, like political competition and conflict uh, among mm -hmm. hardliners and uh, reformists. So as you said, uh, after the IAEA like clarified yeah. any suspicious uh, activity related to Iranian nuclearization, the hardliner decided to uh, conduct mm -hmm. a ballistic uh, missile test so. and and try to you know mm -hmm. like make the position of the reform is the weaker. I see, I see. So it's not like a one unified Iran we are talking about, rather yeah. divided between hardliners and, right. and uh, those people who are the seeking uh, improvement with, mm -hmm. the, with the West. So, mm -hmm. so Iran is not moving in one direction, but yeah. sometimes there are different issues related. Well, hopefully we'll get to talk more about that. Uh, but for now, uh, you know, the, the issues of immediate concern for Korea, mm -hmm. uh, the economy of uh, Iran, it has been affected big time for the past uh, several years by right. the sanctions, right? right. Uh, how do we describe overall economic uh, condition of Iran at this point? Well, uh, it, it's very hard now, right now, but people and the Iranian government itself has a great hope on after the lifting of the sanctions. Mm -hmm. And Iran has the potential, as you, as you know, that Iran is the oil producing country and its oil wells and uh, gas reserves are number uh, top in, in the, in the world the market. Players, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. And also it has a very sizable uh, land and also uh, well-educated middle class right. and right. 80 million people. Mm -hmm. And also its number uh, land land is eight times bigger than the Korean Peninsula. Mm -hmm. It's a huge country in the Middle East. Right, right, right. And there, so despite the oil-rich um, mm -hmm. country, mm -hmm. The Iran has very, um, surprisingly enough, mm -hmm. diversify, uh, diversified industry and right. like a sound manufacturing sector thanks to the Iranian revolution, mm -hmm. which ousted the uh, Shah, who right. is a dictator. Mm -hmm. At the end of 1970s. Exactly, right, right, right. who just like wanted to use the oil money as a mm -hmm. rent. Mm -hmm. So again, even though uh, Iran has a lot of oil, mm -hmm. and at the same time, that country has a relatively uh, healthy sound manufacturing sector. So you're saying ever since the uh, end of 70s, actually the, the revolutionary government, mm -hmm. uh, the government that came, came in as a result of revolution, mm -hmm. has, has been reasonably successful in building their industrial bases. I, I think so, because okay. that regime is the outcome of the civil revolution. Right, right. Maybe they really didn't want it to do that, but mm. they are forced to do that. Mm, I see. In order to deal with the pressures coming from outside to become mm. more 
uh, independent and autonomous. Absolutely, and okay. from uh, the pressure of the people. Then give me some idea about how badly the econ economy has been affected by the sanctions for the past uh, six years. I'm sure it's difficult to quantify, but can you tell us how, how, uh, how much impact it had on the economy? How can I say that? Um, whenever I met mm -hmm. with the Iranian young uh, generation, right. they said that they didn't want um, this bad economy and the, the, the senior people who mm -hmm. like, <clears throat> succeeded in the Iranian, I mean, Islamic revolution right. need to uh, pay mm -hmm. this, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like bad situation. I mean, mm -hmm. they are the responsible um, part of this um, bad economy. So everybody was being affected and younger generation felt it was Younger wasn't generation, fair, right? middle class, change. and yes, and mm. the females. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. So, so it's, it's a change that country as a whole really wanted. Now with this change in terms of the prospect for bounce back, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I'm sure it's difficult to uh, foresee the future here. Mm -hmm. we, don't, we can't be really fortune teller here, but are we expecting rather reasonably quick bounce back or are we saying because of the low oil prices, mm -hmm. uh, the bounce back will not be as, as quick? What, what do you see? Attorney well, Shai? it's hard to predict. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. Iran already decided that it will produce more than 500,000 barrels of oil crude oil to the market. That is going to add to the pressure of pressing the oil price down, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it's a bad sign in one sense. Mm -hmm. But however, mm -hmm. Iran has lagged behind compared to the other Gulf countries and the Russia. And so it really re wishes to re-enter mm -hmm. the oil market. Mm -hmm. And also, there are some frozen assets of Iran around the world, including South Korea. Right, right. So they will try to collect those you know mm -hmm. uh, reserves and it will definitely boost the mm -hmm. Iranian market so in when, some ways. when the money comes back into Iran they'll get to spend more and uh, build things and buy things basically <laughs> yeah they could do so okay yeah. I'm, I'm curious you know I'm continuously wonder about the impact of a low oil price but we'll get to talk about that further I think in, during the remainder of the program here but just to uh, be uh, educated about Iran further uh, we are talking about Iran as a country that's uh, like two, one of the two important powers in the Middle East, right? Mm -hmm. Along with Saudi Arabia, uh, Saudi Arabia being the leader of uh, Sunni uh, uh, Muslims and then uh, Iran as the leader of uh, Shia Muslims. Before the revolution, would you say Iran was one of the closest, uh, one of the countries that were closest to the West? Uh, what was Iran like before the revolution? For the West? Um, before the revolution, yeah. Iran is the typical and traditional Western ally. Okay. And they Was Iran closer to West, West than Saudi Arabia then? Yes, Ir Iran was closer to the West, mm -hmm. but Iran is a relatively good friend of Saudi and other Sunni GCC countries as well. Mm -hmm. And I heard that many GCC, like uh, royal families, mm -hmm. uh, went to vacation in Iran because you know, Iran has like more mm -hmm. like advanced and developed like infrastructures mm -hmm. and other you know ski resorts mm -hmm. and etc etc but, but but it's only after the revolution Iran became the clear leader of the Shia uh, uh, faction of the Islam and got into conflict with the, the rest of the Islam world would you yes, say yes yes okay. I know that there is a even you know like interfactional marriage before the revolution mm, interesting yeah. interesting okay I think we have covered the overall sort of like a political side of this so let's go back to the economic side mm -hmm. here overall uh, for Korea for instance mm -hmm. I mean for Korea I guess one of the key things that we are interested in is a construction market mm -hmm. and an infrastructure building uh, segment right. of the business. Overall, what, do I we, what are we seeing here when the money comes back, as the money comes mm -hmm. back from overseas, mm -hmm. having been pr frozen mm -hmm. overseas and, and as they come back, what's the overall prospect that you, do you, you see in terms mm -hmm. of the revival of the infrastructure and the construction market? Yeah, since the Iranian sanctions specifically targeted that the Iran's oil and gas industry, uh -huh. because where those 
industries are the, where the Iranian can earn money to develop its nuclear activities. So international sanctions were heavily focused on the, those oil and gas industries. Then so are you saying the uh, oil and gas production facilities are kind of old and needs repairs exactly. and stuff? Yeah, so mm. Iran wished to upgrade and modernize mm. those facilities. Mm. And as you know, that the South Korean contractors, the construction and engineering companies, right. are very good at building those plants in the other parts of the Middle East. Mm -hmm. However, Iranian mm -hmm. market has been closed mm -hmm. for several years because of the economic sanctions. So that is a very good opportunity for the Korean companies. I wonder about Chinese competition about mm -hmm. the plant building because mm -hmm. I remember you know, for the past uh, quite some time, Korea has been really leading the plant mm -hmm. building here. But don't we see fast uh, Chinese catching up with us fast here? Yeah, yeah, Chinese are catching up mm -hmm. and there are some anecdotal, you know, uh, stories that you know, the, during the Iran economic sanctions, mm -hmm. only China has took advantage of those, you know, opportunities. Mm -hmm. But given there are some edges over Chinese by the Korean contractors, I think. Well, what are those edges? Well, uh, we have been our companies have been there for quite a long time. Okay, and our doing, ties still exist. I think so, and mm -hmm. some companies are still mm -hmm. remained in Iran mm -hmm. and uh, doing some legitimate business under mm -hmm. the sanctions regime. Mm -hmm. So hopefully, mm -hmm. Iran appreciate those, you know, activities. So Korea has track record there. Yeah, exactly. Right. right. If Iranian contract, uh, the the Iranian part is in, uh, concerned about the cost, maybe they'll go for chi China. But mm -hmm. if they're concerned about more about the quality, quality and stuff, exactly. the track record will mm -hmm. matter. Okay, that's one <laughs> optimistic thing. Yeah, and, uh, and also, uh -huh. we often hear about, you know, like the complaints against China because mm -hmm. even though China was the only country, mm -hmm. like who really did not like actively participate in the sanctions against Iran. Right. But many Iranians, especially I mean younger generation, uh -huh. say that China did that not really for Iran, but only for their own interest. interest. Okay. And, and China is the self-centered, you know, like a self-interest driven country. Uh -huh. And Iranians say that they are, they are not really happy about the quality uh, that China has made. See. And <clears throat> they say that like during the sanctions, mm -hmm. many Iranians told mm -hmm. us that mm -hmm. like China is the only winner and Iran and oh, Korea are the losers because China mm -hmm. is only taking the cheap oil without, uh -huh. you know, like contributing anything for mm -hmm. Iran. Mm -hmm. But then mm -hmm. we said that, well, we understand that, but we sometimes hear that there is, you know, like a nuclear technology cooperation going on between right. Iran and right. North Korea. Right. And we, we, you know, mm -hmm. didn't have much Mm -hmm. you know, alternative or many options. Th I that. think that's a very important point. I, China being, uh, rather than being a, a new challenger coming up and catching up, China has been there, but Iran wanted to achieve better balance and maybe mm -hmm. better balance, achieving, uh, the point of achieving better balance may be coming here. But then in addition to infrastructure and the, the construction mm -hmm. uh, sectors, what are some other business areas mm -hmm. that would matter for us and something that Korea may mm -hmm. be excited about? So Iran has a huge population, mm -hmm. 80 million people, mm -hmm. and the Korean uh, country image and brand are well recognized in Iran, especially home appliances okay. and the mobile phones. Mm -hmm. And also, if you look at the uh, streets of Tehran, then mm -hmm. there are many South Korean produced cars, like the old fashioned uh, Kia model yeah. Pride. Mm. Yeah. I saw that. <laughs> yeah, one and three yeah. are at the <laughs> Kia Pride. And Old the, models? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So the they need to be replaced. Exactly. <laughs> when, yeah. when Iranians get their money back from overseas. <laughs> Hopefully. Okay, okay. Uh, but on that front, I still have this thing about the oil, but uh, mm -hmm. let, let's talk about the, uh, Attorney Shin, you, you're the expert, you got to tell us about this. The dollar transactions mm -hmm. being still restricted mm -hmm. technically, but, but in a easy to understand mm -hmm. terms, what is it? Uh, mm -hmm. Can Iran, is, is it that Iran is just no, uh, is still not allowed to make any transactions in US dollars? What's, what's happening? Yeah, technically right, because the, in U.S. dollar involved transactions, mm -hmm. as far as I understand, understand right. U.S. financial institutions should be involved for the clearing services. 
But if they are the U.S. financial institutions, the banks, the insurance companies right. are involved in mm -hmm. those Iran-related transactions, mm -hmm. then they will subject to the Iran sanctions still ah, remaining. Okay, okay. So they refuse to handle such kind of transactions, mm -hmm. and then it will impact not only the U.S. financial institutions mm -hmm. but other companies around the world, including Iran and South Korea. Mm -hmm. That's a huge impact. Uh, we still have a lot to talk about in terms of how different countries have been reacting to the lifting of sanctions on Iran. And so let's take a look at this one to view uh, overall reactions from other countries and we'll continue on with our discussion right after that. Iran is one of the resource-rich countries in the Middle East. And competition has already begun within the international community to become a dominant player in the Iranian market. China is a country that has taken a swift action. Chinese President Xi Jinping made an official visit to Iran only six days after the economic sanctions on Iran were lifted. China and Iran concluded 17 agreements in various fields including economy, industry and culture. And the two countries agreed to increase trade to $600 billion in the next 10 years, which is currently about $5.2 billion. Also, both leaders announced a joint statement on the establishment of a comprehensive strategic partnership. The statement said that the two countries will continue to firmly support each other on major issues facing the global society, including the Middle East. Iran has turned its eyes to Europe right after the negotiation it had with China. It is to improve its relations with the Western countries, which have imposed economic sanctions on them. Iranian President Hassan Rouhani visited Italy for the first leg of a European trip. Iran and Italy signed MOUs in 14 different areas, which are worth up to 17 billion euros. President Rouhani also held a new chapter in his visit to France. Iran signed a deal to buy 118 Airbus planes, which is worth about $2.5 billion, and also signed a deal worth 400 million euros with a French automobile company. Korea is no bystander to the competition to dominate the Iranian market. Korea and Iran will hold a joint economic committee meeting on February 29th in Tehran, capital of Iran. A large-scale delegation of government and business representatives will be dispatched to the meeting and discuss bilateral cooperation in various fields including energy, infrastructure, information and communications technology, and cultural industry. And President Park Geun-hye is considering to undertake a visit to Iran in April or May. President Park is expected to have a bilateral summit with Iranian President Hassan Rouhani and discuss various issues including bilateral economic cooperation as well as North Korea's nuclear issue. Fierce competition is expected to take place within the global society to dominate the rising Iranian market when about $100 billion of frozen assets are released. Well, as we saw in the video, you know, Chinese reaction to the lifting of sanctions was something that caught our eyes, right? Mm -hmm. Xi Jinping just rushing into Tehran mm -hmm. and, and uh, the, the having discussions and all that. Dr. Zhang, what do you see in terms of the, the cooperation between uh, Beijing and Tehran? Uh, you, you have earlier mentioned that mm -hmm. Iran may have something in mind in terms of achieving better balance with other countries. But mm -hmm. in terms of the, the, the visual things that could come into our way, what, mm -hmm. what are we expecting? Well, again, as I said before, we don't really have to worry about that much. I mean, the Chinese like monopolizing the Iranian market <laughs> and politics because right now the kind of the leaders of the Iranian politics and society is uh, the reformist faction mm -hmm. who really wanted to build the stronger ties with the West. I see. And, mm -hmm. and uh, the Northeast Asian countries, including mm -hmm. Korea and Japan, not really the third you know, party alliance, including mm -hmm. Russia and China. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And again, whenever I visited Iran, mm -hmm. many young generations mm -hmm. say that we are not really supporting our senior members, mm -hmm. you know, tie with you know, Russia, China, mm -hmm. and anti, uh, with anti-American mm -hmm. you know, sentiment. Mm -hmm. I see. So it's a young generation that's rising, and mm -hmm. they have a strong pro-Western, relatively uh -huh. speaking, relatively sentiment. Speaking. So therefore, 
the China's position may be limited for a while. And I think that explains why Xi Jinping was in a hurry. Yeah, maybe to, he, to he knew there. it. <laughs> right, he, he realized that it was necessary there. But let's wait and see how it uh, pans out. But the overall, what about the European mm -hmm. side? Uh, we understand that uh, many of the European players mm -hmm. uh, for the past about a year or so mm -hmm. took the possibility of lifting up the sanctions as given thing mm -hmm. and they've been pre preparing for that pr uh, prosperity, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So have they gone far? In, do we see a lot of European presence or yeah. uh, deals being talked about? Yeah, whenever I visited Tehran, mm -hmm. I saw many Europeans uh, actively, you know, networking and visiting, meeting Iranians there. And remember that that the U.S. has cut its tie with Iran for uh, 1979. Oh, oh, oh. Yes, However, decades. that the mm -hmm. Europeans have maintained its ties with Iran until 2008 or 9. Mm -hmm. Until so, the nuclear issue yeah. came up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The, and it's closer than the U.S. Mm -hmm. So, and also traditionally, that Iran has a very strong and good sentiment with the Europeans. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's natural for them, And I there's think. A, we yes. know that there are very uh, strong background of Iranian independent movie industry, mm -hmm. like art movie, yes, yes, uh, which right. is really mm -hmm. uh, uh, strongly mm -hmm. supported by French ah, like oh, oh, movie yeah, sector. That, that, that's why we see all these uh, young, promising uh, mm -hmm. movie directors rising yeah. up, introducing mm -hmm. interesting yeah. movies. Yeah, mm -hmm. wow. exactly. Interesting. Uh, but Dr. Zhang, I'm always curious about where United States stands on this issue. I mean, mm -hmm. as Attorney Shin has mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, on the United States side, a lot of things are kind of still tentative. Mm -hmm. And they haven't really fully lifted their sanctions that affects the mm -hmm. American companies. Mm -hmm. What does the United States have in mind? Uh, wh what we're seeing at this point is a result of divided America, Republicans, uh, not liking the idea of Obama's action on Iran, lifting the sanctions, and then yes. pro-Israel faction hesitating about that. Well, yeah. Tell us a little bit about what's happening. Yes, here. I mean, there is uh, U.S. pivot to Iran, definitely, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but only under the Obama administration. Mm -hmm. I mean, we know that Obama was so concerned about his or his administration's achievement like a historic achievement with Cuba, mm -hmm. with Myanmar, and finally with Iran. And, and at the same time, the Supreme Leader of Iran, Khamenei, mm -hmm. is not really a big supporter of the United States, but due to this uh, severe economy situation, mm -hmm. Khamenei was kind of like a needed to allow the reformist faction mm -hmm. to do those you know, diplomatic negotiations with the West and mm -hmm. the United States just because that serves his interest best for now. Mm -hmm. Meaning that, you know, after the Obama administration, right. we really don't know. And I clearly remember that right after the, the deal was made last July. Republicans. There's a hostile right. you know, right. reaction, even even from the Democrats. I mm -hmm. mean, not that. Even Democrats? Yes, I'm like sure. from the US Congress, from mm -hmm. the Senate. Mm -hmm. And, and of course, from the U.S. traditional allies in the Middle East, mm -hmm. you know, Israel, Saudi, and UAE, Qatar. Mm -hmm. So yes, there is people to Iran right now, but we don't know until when. Are you saying that President Obama and Iran, they're kind of like alone in this whole picture in U.S. politics? As, is there any faction that supports the idea of improving ties with Tehran at all? I mean, it looks like everybody's uh, with Israel here. Even you're saying Democrats, many Democrats mm -hmm, are mm -hmm. even hesitant about the issue. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone who's supporting the deal, Obama's deal? Yeah, I say Europeans. Europeans. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. because Europeans are worrying about their backyard, which is the Middle East. Mm -hmm. And Europeans are worrying about those, you know, the foreign fighters coming back to home mm -hmm. and, and they think that having the Iranian mm -hmm. into the scene of fight against ISIS mm -hmm. is a good strategy. Oh, okay. ISIS, I guess, is a, it's an important factor. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, what about the, the pro-Israel uh, groups in the oh, United they are, States? They are well, not happy saying? about this deal mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. And and they really wanted us to join their you know agenda, mm -hmm. arguing that if Iran really cannot make the nuclear weapons right now, mm. then Iran can make the North Korea to do that for Iran. And Iran... Iran can buy the... <laughs> yeah, so like Israeli colleagues who kept telling me that mm -hmm. 
I mean, Interesting. South Korea is not really, uh, should not really like unilaterally support those you know, mm. um, sanction lifting. Mm. I mean, that's the Israeli agenda. Mm. I see. The, uh, the Attorney Shin, uh, about the possibility of the United States mm -hmm. getting rid of the agreement mm. after a Republican president gets mm. elected in the United States, how likely is that? Do, do you see that's a, that's a possibility, strong possibility, or do you think it's just a political bluffing? Well, I think it's a real possibility. Yeah, they pledged okay. that they will abolish the Iranian nuclear deal. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. after the lifting of the sanctions, many international companies, European companies, Japanese companies, Chinese and Korean companies mm -hmm. have economic stake in the Iranian market, right. in the investments. Right. I'm not sure how they will react mm -hmm. when the U.S. newly selected Republican president asked for the new sanctions. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure whether the European countries and Japanese countries and even South Korean mm -hmm. will join again to impose the sanctions. That will change the dynamic, mm -hmm. I think. I think that's very important observation. Mm -hmm. So even if the United States changes its mind, mm -hmm. most likely they'll do it on their own mm -hmm. rather than uh, they may not no longer have as much of leverage to, to right. force all the allies to join mm -hmm. the action. I think that's an interesting analysis and very important one. Uh, Dr. Zhang, overall, a little bit like a longer term prospect for the relationship between Washington and, and Tehran. Uh, we, I think we are in agreement that the result of a U.S. presidential election will mm -hmm affect it mm -hmm. big time. Mm -hmm. But overall, do you think the, the long-term trend is for the improvement of the tie between Washington and Tehran? I think so. Mm. Uh, because first, mm -hmm. the United States seems like really want to leave the mm. region, I mean the Middle East. They can't I mean, stay in as, as they have done so yeah, far. Yeah, okay. no, no. Okay. And also, but mm -hmm. they cannot really you know, resolve the, the conflict yet. I mean, we are right. still witnessing the, the the severe stalemate in the Syrian civil war and in the fight against the ISIS, even though you know, 65, inter 65 international countries are joining the international coalition, mm -hmm. but it's not really resolving. So again, if you know, like one of the two powers in the region, mm -hmm. who is Iran, joining in the picture, mm -hmm. Then maybe United States became less burdensome, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they they can like uh, 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 relatively easier to mm -hmm. leave the region. So I that's see. why they are doing you know offshore mm -hmm. balancing mm -hmm. and pivot to Asia. Okay, in the long run, so that mm -hmm. would be the overall direction. Tell us a little bit more about the the, the skepticism about Iran, particularly in in Europe. Uh, they're talking about protest against uh, yeah. Tehran's and so on. Why is that? I mean, we've been saying that mm -hmm. the relationship between Europe and mm -hmm. uh, Iran has been better one mm -hmm. in comparison with uh, Iran's relationship with Washington. But what are the skepticisms about Iran in Europe? Well, what because of the you know international norms about mm -hmm. democracy and human rights mm -hmm. and etc. Mm -hmm. Okay, Iran is a relatively liberal and pluralist country in mm -hmm. the Middle East. Right. Iran has an election, and Iran has a vivid civil society, yeah. and Iranian females like learn Taekwondo. Mm. But the sole final decision maker mm -hmm. is the Supreme Leader Khamenei, who is not elected. Mm -mm. So but it's not Western democracy we're no. talking about, right, right. So they have some you know, kind of reserve mm -hmm. about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> About the values, I understand, uh, the, the care about the democratic values and so on, but are there any business, uh, mm -hmm. economic interest that kind of holds Europe a little bit back? Is there anything, uh, in business, I'm asking, what I'm asking you is, in business, is it all pro-Iran? Or are there some certain factors that would be a little bit cautious about uh, yeah, uh, yeah. normalization? Yeah, not exactly all factions are pro-Iran. Mm -hmm. For example, during the uh, peak of the Iran nuclear deal negotiations. Mm -hmm. At one point, France tried to, you know, block the deal because of its uh, economic relations with. There's a rumor that it has economic relations with the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. France they, did. Okay. Yeah, okay. they they have some, mm -hmm. you know, the the aircraft deals with the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. That they try to delay the deal. So, mm. they they are not only dealing Iran, mm -hmm. but also the Kingdom of KSA and also the UAE and mm -hmm. Arab Gulf countries. Mm -hmm. They also try to European countries are trying to 
to make a balance mm. among those, you know, Middle Eastern players. Oh, okay. So it's not like a one picture, one sided thing, but the, the, the balancing is in the picture. Then, then what was it that the Iranian president trying to do in France and Italy during his recent visit? Mm -hmm. what, what was he doing? Again, the reformist faction wanted mm -hmm. to consolidate mm -hmm. their connection, their ties with the West and with the U.S. because they know that the hardliners and the IRGC, the military, are really waiting for any chance mm -hmm. to hijack mm -hmm. those, the rise of reformist faction who are really, you know, trying to shake the, the system of Islamic Republic of Iran. Mm -hmm. So. I think the, uh, President Rouhani and uh, the Foreign Minister uh, Zarif mm -hmm. like wanted to like invite mm -hmm. the foreign supporters mm -hmm. into the scene of domestic po um, power struggles. And how are the current President Rouhani and the uh, Foreign Minister um, are they fully reformers or are they trying to? playing uh, like a balancing game. Are, are they the center players of the reformers? Not really. They are okay. not mm. the you know, mm -hmm. vanguard of the reformist uh, faction or Green Revolution. Mm -hmm. But I will say, I rather say that they are like kind of you know, smart politicians. Oh, I see, yeah. I see. Sort of like the supreme religious leader himself as well. <laughs> Trying to uh, keep yeah, the balance. Yeah, you can right? say that, yeah. Right. Well, of course, the religious leader is uh, firmly on the conservative side, mm -hmm. however. Mm -hmm. But they're all trying to uh, restore balance here. Okay. And uh, let's now talk about the uh, Korea's interaction with mm -hmm. Iran. We have uh, talked a lot about the other countries here. Uh, how do we compare Korea's interaction with mm. Iran in comparison with other countries? Like, you know, here in Korean media, there have been a lot of complaints about what is President Park doing when Abe is talking about scheduled visit and when uh, Xi Jinping being already there, mm -hmm. uh, what is Korean president doing? A lot of media outlets were saying, what is Korea's stance here? Would, would you say Korea has been a little bit more cautious about this as a whole uh, because of its relationship with the United States? Uh, what's the best way of describing Korea's relationship with Well, the I would say it's fair to say that South Korean governments and the companies are doing well, relatively mm -hmm. doing well with Iran. Look, that China is the permanent member of the UN Security Council. It's a huge country. And the Iran nuclear talk has been conducted by so-called P5 plus 1 and Iran, the right. five members of the UN Security Council and Germany and mm -hmm. Iran. Mm -hmm. They knew the lots of inside knowledge and the resources that how those things are going, going on. So, so President Xi Jinping has a chance to you know, look the mm -hmm. prospect, and then he can easily decide to visit uh -huh. there in mm -hmm. advance. Right, right. They have an inside knowledge. Mm -hmm. But South Korea is not a world you know, superpower. Not so, among the P5, for sure. <laughs> right. Right. So, mm -hmm. however, when the, the US and EU lifted its sanctions on that very day, mm -hmm. South Korean government lifted its own sanctions against Iran. I see. Also during the sanction era that South Korean companies struggled mm -hmm. to maintain mm -hmm. its economic ties with Iran mm -hmm. on the legitimate areas like the cars and the home appliances mm -hmm. and even the some construction companies that remain at the very end mm -hmm. of the sanctions. Mm -hmm. I would say it's fair to say that they are, we are doing very well. Mm -hmm. Would you agree with that point? Do you think Korea is, uh, in a, is on a better footing with Iran because of our relationship in the past? Or uh, what do you say about this Korean media complaining about the uh, president not firming up her visit when Abe has uh, scheduled her visit, his visit? 
Okay, me mm -hmm. who is so concerned about uh, Korean Peninsula security, uh -huh. um, I, I, I'm not sure that the the current uh, Korean administration mm -hmm. is like a hesitating because of the security concern, but I don't think they just like jumping into the Iranian market. It's not really the smartest way for Korean administration to act right. given still mm -hmm. you know close relationship between mm -hmm. you know the hardliners and supreme leader of Iran and the North Korea regime. Mm, I see. I see. You're a little bit on, on uh, with the side of the people with uh, caution, I suppose. <laughs> okay. Then uh, business-wise, what are the, some of the points that Korean business should keep in mind? When, uh, if they are interested in Iran market as, as a long time mm. expert, what, what are some of the points? Well, Iran nuclear deal itself mm -hmm. has some penalty clause for the Iranians. If Iran materially breaches its agreement, mm -hmm. then international community will, can reimpose the sanctions against Iran. Mm -hmm. So it's called so called snapback clauses. Right, right. And then the economic sanctions will reimpose to Iran and and the international companies who were active in Iran during that snapback situation, mm -hmm. then they should wind down their businesses. So before re entering the Iranian market, mm -hmm. the, the Korean companies should think twice that how to address those situations in mm. the contracts and negotiations and mm. pricing with the Iranian wow. counterpart. On that point, I really have to perhaps the toughest question for the day to Dr. Zhang. Uh, totally your personal view and so it doesn't relate to anyone's personal. So feel free as much as you can. How likely is Iran to continue to want nuclear capability, uh, the possibility of Tehran violating the agreement and going back to the past, what do you see? How likely is it? Not that high because fortunately mm -hmm. the Iranian system is run by the, the election, I mean the representative mechanism. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. even the Supreme Leader Khamenei mm -hmm. are really, you know, like receiving the pressure I mean, the, the domestic audience cost from the bottom, from mm -hmm. the society, mm -hmm. who is not really selecting the leader, but selecting the president and other, you know, like the legislators. Mm -hmm. So okay, the deal was possible uh, due to those, you know, factors mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. so elections. The lifting of the sanctions is something that Iranian people really wanted. Yes. Mm -hmm. So going. Uh, turning that around mm -hmm. would be almost impossible, you say? Oh, how can nearly. I say? Yes, nearly, because okay. I Iran is not the North Korean regime. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, Iran mm -hmm. has elections and has people's voice, mm -hmm. and people are getting younger, and they, they are not really having the burden of the revolution, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. task. So they, they really wanted to have a good relationship with the outside, I mean, with the West, with the United States. Very important point there. Then uh, they're talking about uh, President Park's visit perhaps mm -hmm. being scheduled for April or mm -hmm. May. We don't know the details mm -hmm. yet, but when that's materialized uh, from the business perspective, what, do, what are we expecting? Yeah, still Iran is a uh, so-called top-down society, mm -hmm. it's final say has to clarify the Supreme Leader right. Khamenei. Mm -hmm. So the high level context between the heads of two states is a very good sign for businesses as well. Mm -hmm. They can open up the opportunities for Korean companies as mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. using that you know, business summit and uh, networking with the high level Iranian national oil companies, etc. Mm -hmm. be because, because the country itself is still hierarchic. Yeah. Uh, having really top level contact will mm -hmm. make difference for a lot of big deals. Exactly. Okay. Well, what about the economic committee meeting, uh, Dr. Zhang? Uh, the, between the two governments. It's a little bit below the top level there. Mm -hmm. Are there a lot of issues to be discussed and the result uh, through the economic committee meeting that has been already scheduled, right? Yes. Right. Uh, uh, the end of this month. Uh -huh. Right. 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 Uh, wh what are some of the important ones? To be I think that the out? Korean administration mm -hmm. was so like excited about the meeting because uh, 
we know that the top agenda of the current Korean administration is about sales diplomacy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and also startup economy, mm -hmm. uh, uh, which is like a, like driven by the small and medium sized uh, companies. Mm -hmm. Who are the main act right. Korean actors in Iranian economy? Mm -hmm. Like unlike uh, other Arab countries, right, right. many Korean uh, small and medium sized companies are mm. really active in Iran. An economy, so mm. I think that like the the need of the SME companies in Korea is mm. really like closely linked with the uh, President Park Geun-hye's like mm. top agenda. Mm. So I'm pretty sure that the current administration are so active and so excited mm. to launch their you know startup economy agenda toward the Iranian mm. market mm. and economy. So the presidential visit and. Uh, in perhaps we don't know, but uh, sometime April and May, mm -hmm. uh, that will follow the the at the at the end of February, mm -hmm. uh, the economic meeting yeah, right. at all levels, mm -hmm. uh, things will start uh, working out, I suppose. Then, Attorney Shin, the question about from the business perspective, I'm mm -hmm. totally ignorant about this side, but uh, the not government side, but business side, uh, are there something that Korean businesses need to keep in mind in terms of keeping balance between Saudi Arabia, Sunnis mm -hmm. on one hand, and then Iranian, mm -hmm. Iranian interest, uh, Shias on the other, uh, keeping balance in, in Middle East, when they have Middle Eastern business call taking place in, in both yeah, sides? It's a very good question and hard question. And many South Korean companies are usually only have the, the Middle East team or Middle East section. Mm. They are not distinguishing their Sunni, you know, Saudi Arabia team and mm. the Iran team. Mm. However, mm. those two, you know, countries are distinct and even hostile mm. to each other. Right. Hopefully they can maintain current status quo mm. and not escalating their conflict in another level. Mm. It's a very interesting they, they question. They have to be careful about yeah. that. Dr. Zhang, but in a broader sense, uh, you know, United States has a lot of business to do, keeping balance between Saudi Arabia and mm -hmm. Iran. For Korea, uh, on a government level and mm -hmm. bigger pictures, uh, do we have any worry or do we have any concerns about that? Not much, because you know, right now Saudi is under really severe, you know, financial budget pressure because the, of the falling the, oil prices. Uh, exactly, mm. and and Iran is just ready to you know start and re rebuild their economy mm -hmm. so two countries are not you know like try to compete each other mm -hmm. over mm -hmm. a you know just innocent third party which can be korea so they are not really mm -hmm. going to do that because the cost is much higher mm -hmm. to do that mm -hmm. i see so for Korean perspective, the worries should be on the side of Washington, but for <laughs> Seoul's perspective, we don't have as much of the headache. I, I guess that is indeed good news. Uh, the Korean viewers of this program may wonder about the Iran and North Korea. When the sanctions were lifted, a lot of commentators in Korea, without perhaps deep thoughts, I don't know, maybe with deep thoughts, they were saying, uh, it's North Korea should follow the Iran's example. Look what Iran has done. North Korea, Pyongyang should learn the lessons and so on. What are some of the big differences and perhaps similarities between Iran's case and North Korea's case of nuclear issues? I don't see any <laughs> similarities, unfortunately. I mean, I'm just so mm. negative viewer here. <laughs> Well, we need realists. <laughs> okay, again, the uh -huh. deal was possible only because of the Iranian domestic power structure. I, I see. mean, the presence of election, the presence mm -hmm. of reformist faction, the mm -hmm. presence of middle class, younger voters. We don't have that in North Korea. We, maybe we have it, but we, we can't see it. Uh, it's mm, all I don't think we have those factors. And also, mm -hmm. the, the North Korean economy just, I mean, way too closed. And the only connection with the outside is China. So harsher sanction uh, no. on North Korea is not really working, just mm -hmm. like uh, mm -hmm. what it worked in Iran. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, but then we cannot really say that, well, there's no difference. We cannot say that. So <laughs> what I think is that maybe not the North Korean domestic factors, mm -hmm. but like international factors right. in the Iran deal, which is like, you know, very active 
you know, like involvement of European countries mm, mm, who mm. really buys international norms and, you know, principle. So I think that maybe we need to invite mm -hmm. like a more norm driven European like actors mm -hmm. into our, you know, nuclear negotiation. Right, right. So okay. that, but then, you know, the, the larger, you know, players are really good a strategy or not because mm -hmm. it, like even only six parties really didn't work <laughs> right. but then you know ten parties really work right. but still I think that's the only lesson or implication from the Iranian deal mm. for the North Korean mm. nuclear deal mm. I think mm. and also about the facts we have to be clear right uh, I wonder whether Iran ever declared their withdrawal from NPT. Did they? No. De they no, didn't no, do that. They never. Did they ever declare that they are seeking to develop nuclear weapons? No. no. They didn't do that, and they never tested nuclear weapons. No. No. They never. Okay, so there are there are the differences between <laughs> yeah. North Korea and yeah. Iran, and North Korea has gone very far as compared mm -hmm. to. Iran's exactly. case. So, looks like those people who are talking about the the lessons from Iran for Pyongyang. Uh, we need uh, more argument. But seriously, of mm -hmm. course, we do hope that, mm -hmm. that there are some lessons from mm -hmm. Tehran for Pyongyang as well. Then now, uh, for the interest of time, uh, let's have an overall wrap up of our discussion. Attorney Shin, what do you see in terms of uh, what we should keep in mind, uh, the, the global change resulting from the lifting of the sanctions on Iran mm -hmm. for the world and for Korea, how we should be prepared? Uh, your final words. Well, we, I would say we should be cautiously optimistic mm -hmm. and prepared well in advance to re-enter the market and closely watching the international movements, international politics and the, in, in the Middle East and greater region to do businesses in Iran. Mm, I see, with some caution, but with a uh, wide pr perspective. Dr. Zhang, your final words in terms of what we should keep in mind on this issue? Well, again, related to the Korean Peninsula issue, mm. I wanted to say that the nuclear North Korea is, is not really only threat toward Northeast Asia. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've been seeing that the illegal activity of North Korea is very widespread in the Middle East, uh. so that we can you know, like incentivize the European countries mm. to join our talk mm -hmm. and make that happen in North Korea as well. Mm. Sort of like how it happened with regard to Iran as well. Exactly. Okay, so indeed, not only just uh, narrow our focus on nuclear weapons itself, but uh, think about broad issues and then think about how Iran resolved their situation and mm -hmm. how the world community actually worked on resolving Iran's issue. Maybe we can draw a lot of lessons here. Okay. All right, I guess that's how we are going to wrap up today's discussion here. I'm sure our viewers who have joined from all around the world has learned a lot, have learned a lot about the overall Iran situation uh, and, then, and then how Korea sees the uh, overall uh, prospect for the future. And I'm sure Korean viewers did the same. And that means uh, our viewers should come back to us once again to understand important issues that affect the world as well as, as Korea in this program up front. So we'll see you next time. And until then, goodbye.